In order to understand higher levels of protein structure, we really need to begin by understanding the conformation of the peptide group. And ultimately, in order to define the conformation of the peptide group, let's look at the peptide bond itself. Remember the C double bond O, bond N, bond H, right? This right here, the C bond N, is the peptide bond. So the peptide group is actually defined as those atoms involved in the peptide bond, but additionally, the alpha carbon that binds to the carbonyl carbon, as well as the alpha carbon that binds to the amide nitrogen. Together, this entire group is the kind of root structure or core structure of higher levels of protein uh, conformation. And so this is the peptide group. Now, one of the things that began happening in perplexing scientists was that when they looked at what was this uh, supposed C double bond O, they started to recognize that it was actually slightly longer than a typical C double bond O. So we're going to go ahead and jot that down recognizing that this was a, a bit of a eureka moment when they realized that, in fact, this was longer than what you would expect to see if this were actually a kind of true and traditional C double bond O. And likewise, interestingly, the peptide bond itself, the amide bond, was slightly shorter than what they were expecting to see. So this was a little bit further perplexing, but probably hypothesis generating in that it's a recognition that the true structure is actually going to be something in between the two, the beautiful um, nebulous in between of a resonance hybrid structure. So I hope you remember from chemistry drawing the two imaginary structures that allow you to get to the resonance hybrid. So this is a recognition that our true structure is a resonance hybrid and that in fact if we are to go ahead and draw the two imaginary structures um, looking first at the one that we drew above but then recognizing that additionally this lone pair of electrons can pop down here and this of course pushes this pair of electrons up onto the oxygen and we get another imaginary structure in which we have the negative charge on the oxygen and the part and the positive charge on the nitrogen in actuality, we know that the resonance hybrid is somewhere in between, and I don't know if anyone else was um, lucky enough to have that uh, fantastic chemistry book in which they talked about a resonance hybrid being kind of like when a purple horse mates with a blue donkey and you get a purple mule. I mean, totally weird and random <laughs> kind of analogy, but it, it obviously must have worked because I still remember it. <laughs> so here's our resonance hybrid in, in which we actually see a bit of both of these structures being the case over which the electron structure is delocalized across the peptide bond and across the uh, C bond O. And we get, because of that, a certain amount of character of the right-hand resonance structure in which there's a partially negative charge on oxygen and a partial positive charge on uh, nitrogen. This, of course, makes the peptide gro group itself polar, and it enhances the local neighborhood interactions that we talked about in secondary structure making those a lot stronger hydrogen bonds between the carbonyl oxygen and uh, the amide hydrogen. So we overall would see, note that the peptide group is polar. Absolutely, and that affects so much of its bonding behavior. And so we also need to recognize what this does to the nature of the peptide bond, because where we would have once thought that this single bond in nature would make this a very flexible bond around which free rotation was possible, in fact, the fact that this is a resonance hybrid means that really we do not see any rotation. So no free rotation around that peptide bond, as might have been expected if it weren't a resonance hybrid, and it, that can be contrasted with these other two bonds, the C alpha bond C and the N bond C alpha, around which free rotation is possible.
Now let's take a look at this um, using a model because that always is way more fun. It's due to the partially double bonded nature of the peptide or amide bond and the, therefore the lack of free rotation around that bond, we actually can see two different conformations that can form around the peptide bond at the, um, at the st stage of synthesis. Let's pull our attention to this model, um, back to our good old model, and see the peptide bond. Um, if you take a look here, we can find our peptide bond bond right here, peptide or amide bond, the carbonyl carbon doubly bound to the oxygen there, and the um, amide nitrogen here. And of course, this is the bond around which free rotation is not possible. And thus, at the time of synthesis, two different conformations essentially has, have to be chosen between. So we can think of our peptide bond because of the lack of free rotation as being like a plane. And I'm going to show you this plane quite fittingly with a chocolate bar that was just given to me by one of my past biochem TAs. So this is going to be the plane right there. And in this particular confirmation that we currently see, we can recognize that the two alpha carbons, right, this one here and this one here, are on opposite sides of the plane. So this is one possible confirmation. Now at the time of synthesis, the other possibility for the confirmation that we can see there is the confirmation in which both alpha carbons are on the same side, the bottom, in the, the way that we're showing it, of the plane of the peptide bond. So let's just check that out again one more time. So we have this conformation where both alpha carbons are on the same side of the peptide bond plane versus this conformation in which they're on opposite sides. These have a very important name. This is the trans conformation. This is the cis conformation. Trans and cis. And I hope that what you're noticing as I make those changes is the large amount of steric hindrance that exists in the cis conformation that is alleviated in the trans conformation. So as you might very fittingly guess, most commonly we totes see the trans conformation as opposed to the cis.